Every February, events and activities celebrate the legacy and accomplishments of Canada's black population. And although it's come to an end, celebrating black Canadians is something we should do year-round. That's why the Black Canadian Creator Directory was created. With over 500 black creators, from YouTubers to bloggers and writers, it's making it easier for the public to find them. It's a great opportunity to connect with people and learn about some amazing initiatives like the Black Canadian Content Creator Directory. Oh, that sounds right. <laughs> Is that correct? Hey, no, there's too many C's. Plus, oh, there, are. <laughs> there are. Black Canadian Creator Directory. Not The content is just kind of just baked in there. So how about we just start with a quick introduction of uh, who you both are and what you do. Kaya is first. Oh, <laughs> uh, my name is Kaya. I am a Vancouver born and raised content creator. I started as a natural hair blogger, primarily just documenting my journey with others. And since then it has expanded into sharing like lifestyle content, as well as helping teach other content creators how to do the thing as well and make a business out of it. <laughs> Amazing. I'm Casey Palmer from Toronto, Ontario. And yeah, I started, I, my, my blog actually recently became a teenager, which is very weird. It's been around long enough for that. Um, and yeah, I started as like a man about town going to events in the heyday of Twitter when we had tweet ups and it was all about like, hey, let's go out and drink for free because people want to do that. This is great. But then uh, along the way, I had kids and now I write about that. Um, but now they're old enough that I can't write about them with other friends, like making fun of them at school. So now it's kind of like now I write about me. It's just weird. It's all evolutionary, but I enjoy sharing stories online. <laughs> so how did you both to just get get involved in the content creator space? What what kind of like sparked your interest to get into it? For myself, I've always had a love for writing. So like being an author was always the thing I wanted to do. Shirley's here. It all works out in the end. It the does. <laughs> hey, Cheryl. Hey, sorry for the delay. Major delay. No problem. All good. I was mad late, so it's okay. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Were you really? This yeah, early? I was. It was in my calendar because I had to put it in there. And then I was like, oh, wait, I'm in like literally another call at the same time. So now we're here and we're working it out <laughs> and we're giving intros and uh, Ryan's asking us questions and it's all going great. <laughs> great. You know, it's just a great start to a Friday. Like what's a Friday without a little exactly. chaos? In it, right? Exactly. <laughs> a lot of chaos, tons of chaos, all the chaos. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, so Shirley, since you're here, uh, how about we get a quick introduction of who you are and uh, what you do? I am Shirley. I am a digital community builder. I'm a, pod a podcaster first at heart. Um, and uh, I podcast two shows and run a, a podcast network in the channel network. My podcast is Black Canadian Creators. Um, and then I have another one, but that's on pause at the moment. Um, and yeah, and I run a community on Facebook and Instagram mainly to help spotlight content creators who are, who identify as black, um, Afro Métis, mixed black, um, who uh, create content digitally or traditionally in Canada or are Canadian, black Canadians who create abroad. And we're just kind of going around and talking about, you know, what first got us interested in content creating. Is that a question that Casey and... Yeah, uh, Kaya can handle it first. She's in the middle of an answer, so we'll start with Kaya and then I'll take it. <laughs> and then we'll get back to it. Yeah. Okay. Um, do you want me to start? What's easiest for you? Yeah, we'll just restart. All it's right. okay. Yeah, all right, cool. Um, I got my start because I always loved writing. I wanted to be an author. So starting a blog just seemed like a natural pro progression to get my writing out there. And then everything else kind of followed afterwards, like the picture taking, the talking on camera, like none of that came natural to me. But along the journey, I also was really seeking out community, especially as a Black Vancouverite. I knew like my mom and my brothers and that was kind of it. So documenting my hair journey online was just like a really great way to also find a sense of community in the digital space. 
Yeah. What about you, Casey? Um, yeah, my I've been sharing. I've been also into writing. Um, I started my sharing online with like a GeoCity site back in like 1998, 1999. Went into Live Journal in 2002. I'm throwing all these dates out that like made me want to sit in my rocking chair right now. <laughs> um, and it just kind of all, you know, I feel, I feel like I did like a good decade of just kind of exploration and online, like just exploring online community to try to figure out, uh, who I was, what my voice was. And then we got to, you know, the early 2010s and I was suddenly like, oh, like people are doing this as a thing where you go out into the real world. It wasn't just online only communities. That's where the merge started to happen. And you started to see more of the physical space that came with it. So people would have their digital properties, but also, um, you know, start to form their groups. And that's where I really found my stride. And I think there was a point where I was going out to events sometimes like five, six times a week and just writing about it all the time and taking photos. And I look back at my photos from like the early 2010s and I'm like, this is horrible. Who took these photos? Why would you, why would you put this online? What is, ugh. but I've learned many lessons over the years and definitely over the time, uh, especially be through becoming a parent, found my voice and learned what stories I like sharing. And also people started finding value in those stories. So it kind of just kept inspiring me to go forward despite, you know, uh, I, I, I could lead a simpler life where I raise kids and do my job and then come home at the end of the day and not crack open my computer and try to go through all my notes and be like, what story do I want to tell today? But uh, some part of me is just driven to keep doing it. And I think I'll still do it until um, Carpal Tunnel takes these hands over and says, you can't do this anymore. Until then, until then, there's more stories to tell. So, yeah, that's kind of my story. And then, Shirley, we've uh, talked a little bit, but how about just a, a quick... Um... Message to be able to be like, hey, how how did you get into this industry? Uh, content creation actually it started because I like I was telling you like I won an iPad. My background is in radio broadcasting. I won an iPod Nano. I'm aging myself right now, and discovered podcasting. And I wasn't doing anything in radio. And it's so funny because I wasn't doing anything in radio, and then I got into podcasting, which helped me, which helped me get in radio, <laughs> you know, so especially when we're in Montreal, but what got us content for me, like we wanted to document what it was like in our thoughts, you know, my hubby and I, you know, my life partner um, about being an interracial couple and, you know, there's a lot of layers, like one of the first layers were to journal and document. We always make a joke, like document who we are so our kids can listen to the show in the future and save themselves money from therapy. <laughs> That's one layer. And then really, too, but, um, you know, we would always be in bed or after work and talk about like issues that we would see on television or things that Sometimes we would be in the situation or going somewhere and how we would notice how our perspective was different and how the world treated us differently or how, how we saw things. And we thought it was very interesting. And so we decided to start a podcast like in early 2010 um, called Chonilla. And we did that for five years, once a week, five years straight. Um, and then we pushed ourselves to do it like five days a week, which was insane with little kids. And it was really like, yeah, it was a way of journaling, but also to help see if there was other interracial couples like ourselves who were open to talk about the things you're not supposed to talk about, like racism and race and politics and religion. And, um, and we really infused a lot of comedy to make it easy for people to really like, be able to look at a pers at our perspective in a lighter way through comedy and and these kind of hard conversations. You know, wait before we go on, Shirley, you just made me realize something. All three of us are in interracial interracial relationships, and I'm like, what is it that makes us find I'm each other? I'm also in one. Yes, Ryan. I'm also yes. <laughs> I don't like what is it that makes us find each other? I don't know. Like even like people like go on trips with like it's literally all these interracial couples getting together and we just go and travel together. And I'm like, what is this universal tie? Like this bond that ties us together. I love it. <laughs> it's funny, Casey. You brought up like now that you said it out loud. Like we're all in interracial relationships. I think it's fascinating. We're all content creators too because 
I think because it's giving us access to different perspective and, you know, seeing how the world is through the lens of the people that we love who don't necessarily come from the same culture or doesn't necessarily like look like us. It, I, th- I think it just kind of maybe sparks some sense of curiosity and empathy and openness to be able to, through exploring with who we are with the other person who's from, who's completely different from ourselves, that maybe in some way it helps sparks us to be the content creators that we are, you know? So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, Casey. Yeah, I didn't even think until you said it. I was like, oh yeah. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's such an interesting coincidence. Like how these things just kind of like come together. It's the same thing with like all my friends, like within the queer community, it's always about they always kind of congregate around each other. Mm-hmm. Like it's always these friends find groups, each and other and everyone starts mm-hmm. coming out and you're like, Hey, I I I'm queer in this kind of spectrum and you're like Oh my god, no way. Same here. Awesome. And then it's just how this happens? It's just like these weird kind of magnetisms that happen in life. I'm writing on that one sometime. Valentine's Day is coming up, right? That's the thing. Yeah, yeah, this is happening. I'm going to do something. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm so not ready now that you said that. I'm still on like planning for Black History Month. Oh, no, Valentine's Day on top. Oh, sure. There's no winning. There's no winning. Don't try to win, Shirley. Don't do it. I mean, if you want to, if you want to feel really, really unaccomplished right now, you should go check out Kaya's planning video of twenty minutes, where she goes over everything she's planning for twenty twenty three. Lord have mercy! She oh, is, I'm she's excited! Ready. I'm gonna she's ready to take I'm it off. Behind, I'm already behind though on like everything on the list, so <laughs> oh. don't feel bad. So to kind of like get back on track uh, a little <laughs> yes. bit, the Black Canadian Creator Directory a really cool place where individuals can come and find amazing creators here in Canada. How did you all three come together to kind of create this idea? Guys, who tells the best story? The credit for that one, a hundred percent is Casey. Casey (laughs) spearheaded that. Um, (laughs) I can give the intro to how it started in that we all kind of had these, our own little lists. So I had a list of like, I don't even know how many it was, 30 Black Canadian influencers um, that I looked up to and admired. And Shirley had her Facebook group, Casey had lists, and Casey was the one who had this big idea to do something with it and create what it is now. Yeah, I think the the big idea was that we just knew that You know, we had all these lists and we all knew that we wanted to have a better way to not only have the information, but also have it available to make a change, really. Um, One of the things we all experienced a lot over the years of everything from influencer marketing to having our own brands or whatnot is that, you know, you'd often get these emails of like, especially coming up to February, you'd be like, hey, do you know people who are good for this? Like, we're looking for this. And like, it would be the same cycle year in, year out all the time. And so what, like, I've always been a big data nerd and everything. And I was like, you know, there's probably a way to bring this all together so that it's actually usable. And that we can actually have it in one space where everyone can like agree to like this is this is the list. And we we had a lot of sessions of uh, kind of poking and prodding and you know taking all the data and putting it in Excel and starting to like kind of build the back end of this thing. And then you know it was it, we brought it out into the world. And I have to say like you know I was overwhelmed by just how much the community which is kind of like we've been waiting for something like this like for forever the fact that it exists now it was like it's a game changer because it was just it was our way of having something that you know we can represent just how vast the number of you know black canadian creators we have is like you know you can often feel like you're like alone or just part of a small group um but it's at 500 people now and we're just like it's it's really showed us that like, there's a huge presence out there that we haven't been tapping into, and we're hoping that it continues to develop from there. Black History Month, and I know a lot of people are starting to change their perspective on how they approach it beyond just like, let's talk about slavery and that sort of thing, to actually 
you don't celebrate black Canadians, the, the diversity and amazing contributions that individuals can bring to the country. And when we're looking at this network, over 500 amazing people that are contributing to the culture of Canada. Uh, for all of you, why is it important to highlight and celebrate black voices? Not only for Black History Month, but just year round. No, Shirley does really well at that, actually. Shirley's probably, out of out of the three of us, I say Shirley's one who's dialed in most to continue to do that throughout the year. So I will cede the floor to you, uh, Shirley. Um, it's just important. I mean, here in Canada, especially, I, I was finding, and that's why I created the space on Facebook, is there we were, we were inundated with, you know, American content, especially when it comes to Black creators. And so... Um, and also what I was ha what was happening too with me with the Facebook group or even with the Instagram account, I was becoming like a human roller deck, you know, and and so so many times like I've had people or you know fellow creators, hey, I want I'm trying to find a photographer, but I don't know where to go. I'm trying to find a blogger, but I don't know where to go. Um, and you know, but also. <laughs> We needed a way for people to no longer make excuses that are not black, you know, whether it's companies or brands or uh, especially companies and brands um, when, you know, I've I've mentioned this before, like being in a room and, you know, um, they start a network, a podcast network, let's say, and they're like, we, you know, or even a brand say, we want to diversify, we want to like bring these kind of voices uh, that are Black, but we don't know where to go. And so teaming up with, you know, with Casey and Kaya, it, is, it was important to no longer give that excuse and put it out there through the directory um, to kind of showcase like, look, like there's no excuse anymore. We're here and we're, you know, it's easy to find us. Um, and I think too, with, with, because we're seeing such, um, in media, whether it's especially like in television, you're, you're starting to see more shows like, you know, pretty hard cases, uh, is an example of like, you know, bringing a sense of diversity through stories and, um, uh, or even like uh, there's a great show with a trans trans uh, woman. Oh, I, I forgot the name of the show, but you're seeing in media and television the sense of like bringing stories that are BIPOC. And in Canada, we tend to be a little bit slower. <laughs> um, and so because of these stories and 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 also to help celebrate content creators way before like we tend to celebrate black content creators when they reach a certain set level of success when they're in the united states like people like drake and the weekend that's when we later find out oh they're canadian and i i wanted to avoid that through doing what i was doing with the facebook group and showcasing um you know on instagram and also in hopes too that people who are not black to help discover the content creators that are out there. So it gives them different ideas, different perspective to think about the world outside of, you know, like we talked about, we're all in an interracial relationships. And I'm sure we've been challenged by certain ideas and certain things that we probably never thought of or perspectives we never like even fathom to think about unless, you know, with the people that we love. And so, so having a list that's free, that's to the public and, and also having these kind of accounts with, with you know the way that we're showcasing them on our website, we hope that it's going to help people who are not black to be courageous, <laughs> be adventurous, and really, you know, read and see and consume these content from amazing creators um, to learn new things and gain new ideas and build more empathy and the sense of, you know, making the world a better place and in, in a way as well through the lists that that's out there through our sites. Thank you so much, Shirley, for sharing that. 
in terms of media and hearing stories from people and then being able to get something out of it, regardless of the representation, like as humans, we have intersectionalities with everyone, like our similarities. We're all in interracial relationships. So that's something we can all relate to for, for other stories. It could be like, Oh, like I experienced this one way. Like there is something that we can learn from the people in the screens, the songs, the the stories that we can then feel in our lives and relate and learn from. And when people say, oh, I can't relate to this because of X, it's like, well, are you even a person then? Like (laughs) people have lives and experiences. As a gamer, there's a lot of things in the gamer community like, a, a female lead in a game, I can't relate to that. It's like, why not? They have lives, they have experiences, they go through trials and tribulations. Those are things you can apply to. It's like, just because there are some things you can't relate to doesn't mean there aren't things you can, and you can learn from the things that you don't relate to. That's very true. I mean, I know that, you know, the entire idea of masculinity, as an example, has been just transforming so much over time. And so um, between the content I've been writing, talks I've been giving, um, I'm writing a trying to finish up a book right now on black fatherhood and it's just like a lot of the things that have come up before as like you know the machismo of the 80s and like a very fixed idea of what a dad or a man is supposed to be uh don't don't really apply (laughs) as much to the way i run my life i'm like i'm trying to do a lot of celebrating the kids feelings i'm trying to do a lot of exploring different things i basically um i'm working on a post right now where one of the things I picked back up in the pandemic was sewing because um, I, I did it at first in a class back in 2012. And then both my kids are in scouts and um, sewing multiple badges by hand is a pain in the ass. So I was like, no, we're not doing this anymore. No, I got myself like a cheap singer sewing machine on off of Amazon. And like, it's actually like almost like a joyous thing. Cause I'm so used to being on computers. So used to writing all the time that being able to do a project with my hands and whether it's pricking my fingers with like pins or like, you know, trying to make sure that I get the, the seams in the right way has been a much different thing than what I was raised with or you know what would be traditionally expected of me to know so i think it's one of those things like i feel i i resonate a lot with what shirley was saying before and that the idea of being able to be in a space where you can bring your whole self and express these different elements of who your life is and you know race is one part of it and your entire upbringing and the things you've been through because of that are a part of it but then being able to like show that you know this entire monolithic idea of who a black person is and you know between the directory having so many different types of people between our content streams having so many different kinds of stories and content on them I think it's just we're in a time now where at least those who are consuming the most content, who I would assume are are, argue are the younger generation, are looking for things that represent multiple parts of themselves and not just one. And think I think this is kind of like a step in the right direction towards getting us to a place where it's like, hey, like, let's let's look at the entire picture and find the different people who can kind of like champion those elements of what you're all about. And to add to that, too, I, I love what you said, Casey, because here's a perfect example, too, why it's so great that this directory is out there. And I really hope and encourage that people who are not like who are just everybody, it doesn't matter, black, white, it, like everyone, the importance of discovering and and making the effort to discover content that are outside of you, of someone that looks like you or 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 different cultures is I was reading something where, and some because sometimes it could save a life. And here's why. I was reading an example of a um, nurse, a white nurse was uh, taking care of a few people. And one of the women that was, uh, you know, recovering from, I think, surgery or something like that, I can't remember, remember, kept tapping her head. <laughs> and the nurse was, kind of like baffled, like, why is this person is doing this? Now, to kind of bring an example, like, let's say um, she, now that nurse happened to work with another nurse who is Black. 
Um, and she said, like, you know, I think I'm going to call, I think we probably need to call a, a psychiatrist, a psychologist for this patient because she just keeps tapping her head, right? And <laughs> her colleague said to her, uh, you know, just kind of asked her a few probing questions. And she's like, well, what do you mean? That kind of thing. She's like, yeah, she just keeps tapping her head. I just don't understand. And I really think maybe we should consider getting a psychologist. And, and, um, and the, the black nurse said, oh no, she wears a weave. <laughs> and so now I'm, th- and I was thinking when I read this story, now imagine if that black nurse wasn't there, but, uh, but let's say that maybe by chance it's all white nurses, but one of the nurses is actually watching content about a content creator who happens to be black and makes content about natural hair or anything related to hair. Right. And they talk about not just natural hair, but about, you know, you know, uh, weaves, extensions and wigs and stuff like that. And the whole tapping that the, the, the head, because the tapping of the head is really a way for people, you know, for women who have extensions, it's kind of hard to get in there and scratch your head. So the tapping helps with the scratching when you're, you know, when your scalp is itching. And so now imagine like someone who is not black would have seen a content creator talk about this or see it, you know, in a creative, funny way and say to their colleagues, no, 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 we don't need to call anyone it's all good it's just her scalp is itchy and and that's what I'm talking about the importance of like it's so great that this list is out there because it could save a life like it's it seems so small even in that story but it just made me think when I read the article like wow this is why um you know it's important for people to not just discover this list only not just for Black History Month but all the time all year round because you will learn so many things like little small nuances and the beauty of our culture and how different it is and how we do things differently can sometimes help people understand or save a life or, you know, need or not be called out like, Hey, you need a psychiatrist because you're tapping your head, you know? Man, forget black people. As a black man, I didn't know that. I just know what happened. But now I know oh, really? I didn't know that. I was like, I was like, I just see it happen. I'm like, oh, that's just part of like flattening the we or whatnot. I'm like, oh, that's oh, this no. makes so much more sense. Okay. No, like, as like, soon as you said tapping, I was like, I know where this story is going. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's similar things that I like. Uh, my my partner and I like go through. Like, uh, she's uh, Filipino, so one of the things they do is instead of pointing at things, it's like it's over there, it's over there. So I'm like, what are you doing? <laughs> it's just those small things or like, surely we had this conversation where I mentioned to her, oh, I, I went on a wild goose chase today. Why are you chasing geese? <laughs> and it's like, oh, you're right. So it it is so fun to kind of expand one's horizons and experience other people's cultures and kind of just i guess culturalisms would be the the correct word for it were just these different unique things and you're like ah oh, that's cool oh i didn't know that and then you can share and then through that you build connection and you get a broader perspective of the world around you yeah absolutely it's 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 so important so i mean i'm Shout out to Casey. I mean, Casey was, Casey, you didn't talk about like, you know, the list really was inspired because he created a list for black fathers and like for, for fathers, right? Or was it, it wasn't. (laughs) No, I had a few. It was like bloggers who are dads, right? Yeah, I had a Canadian dad blogger list that I put together before this. And then after creating that, I was like, you know what we can build after this? We can build a list of Black Canadian uh, black Canadian creators. And I forgot all about that part of the story. Thank you, Shirley. Yeah, no, it's just, you know what? I, I'm realizing in my work life, in my creator life and everything, there are easier ways to do things than like, you know, just basically try to update something all the time. Um, one of the things that made this project really unique was like being able to find ways to automate it just because we all have other things to do with our time so we built in a number of things uh into the list itself like it it refreshes itself every 15 minutes 
Um, people can go and input themselves, search themselves, as well as put in their own information. And it takes them, like a very minor amount of cleanup on the back end to get done. Um, but I'm after enough years of creating content and working with brands and stuff like that, I'm very much in a tool building mentality. I rather people have the necessary tools to help them find the information or empower them with the information needed to make decisions or find the people they want to learn from. And that's, I think, where we need to start thinking into the future. So these are the kind of projects I end up, you know, being really pesky about where I remember when we were creating it, I'd be in uh, DMs and their text messages all the time. Like, hey, guys, hey, hey, we got to do this. We got to do this. Here's another thing we have to do. And I was really hella annoying about it. But I think we are perfect. all we're all enjoying where we are it now. Was because great. Of <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I, it, it's honestly, guys, like, Casey, thank you for putting all the work in that data, like the structure, because it's been great. I've had calls where I've had friends who <laughs> this happens a lot, actually, a lot of con- a lot of us content creators. It's, you know, there's very little, a very small amount that does this full time, you know, and um, I know a lot of us inspi- like aspire to do it full time, but you know, we, it's a side hustle and we have a full-time job or things like that. But I've, I've noticed one of the biggest trends I've noticed since the, the pandemic, um, and especially after the whole George Floyd, it was a huge increase of a lot of content creators I knew were being hired by a lot of companies and what was happening, the trend, the, the trend, I guess, maybe there's a different word is that, um, when they were being hired, a lot of times they were either the only black person or just, the, you know, the added few. And when, so when there's projects that would come up where, you know, on, you know, like February, Black History Month coming up. I've had many content creators say, hey, I've used this list as like, you know, to say, hey, let's go through this list and see who we can find. And they've used it to advocate other creators in the spaces that in their jobs, in the in the spaces that they work at. And it's been great to hear that these kind of stories where it's like, you know, many of us who our side hustling creators are using it to advocate other creators within the company they work full time or part time or, or so that's been super cool. How about we just go around real quickly about what your favorite experience was kind of putting this together and working together and where people can go to find out more about you. Working with like like Casey being the greatest motivator <laughs> and structurer and and uh, Kaya with her amazing like content, I'm always learning. Like I know I may not express or give them a call like all the time, but in the background and just even liking what they do and supporting them that way, and how much it means the world to me to see what they do in public in the content creation that that they've done because it's in, it's inspiring me. I'm still, you know, I, I, I tell them like when I grow up, I want to be like them kind of thing. <laughs> so for me, it fulfilled this idea of community, you know, because as content creators, we tend to be very silo. We tend to just do things on our own. The year that this came about, I remember telling myself like collaboration was going to be my word in, in uh, I think, the, when did the list start? It was it 2021 or 2022 we started this? 22. 2022. Yeah, I remember collaboration in 2022 was like my word for the year. And to to fulfill that with them and do with some amazing people like them, it, it's just so awesome. And it's it's it fills my heart. And it's great that I don't have to be it's great. I don't have to be a human real roller decks and just say, go to the list, <laughs> you know? Um, um, and what I'm up to right now is actually this list has been very inspiring for me. I'm really, I'm working on hoping to part, like hoping to help these creators to start thinking about monetizing their work. And so really using this list has been, such great timing because I, I I want to help them to think about, you know, uh, branding themselves and partnering with brands. And so that's kind of like something I'm kind of working on in my, in the lab, just stirring something up for 2023. So that way 
Um, through this list, I'm hoping that I can help them have gain opportunities to monetize. Uh, I always make Kaya go first, so I'll go first this time for a change and change it Perfect. up on her. Um, Perfect. Yeah, you know what? My my favorite part of uh, being able to put the Black Canadian Creator Directory together with Kaya and Shirley was, you know, I've always been big into collaboration and I find whether it's like ego or just everyone's complexity of life or whatever, it often feels so hard to do. And I thought, you know, from just going through this and getting everyone's list, putting it all together, coming up with like I like all the testing and ideas of how we wanted to see it happen, um, it actually worked out a lot better than you know I originally anticipated. And it's, I think, a kid just got shot with a Nerf gun in the background there. Anyway, moving on. Oh. <laughs> They brought it on themselves. It's fine. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think it, it just felt natural. And, you know, before this, um, we all knew each other. Like, we are in similar circles and everything, but we never really collaborated to this extent on something. We were all just kind of like really friendly and it was good. But now we're bonded, which is like much better. So, yeah. Amazing. And where can people go to find out more about the stuff that you do? trying to get a cough out there. So it's like, I got to do this and then go on mute. All right, we're good now. I'm better. Woo. Uh, so the brand is under Casey Palmer, Canadian dad. You can find me at caseypalmer.com, C-A-S-E-Y-P-A-L-M-E-R.com. And there's going to be details that go with this. So you should just check that out too, because there'll be links. It'd be great. But yeah, I'm uh, on, I have my blog, which I'm bringing back into the fold. Uh, doing a lot of Instagram and Facebook, uh, trying to get back on the newsletter game. I'm just trying to get as many stories out of my soul as possible. And that is where I'm at right now. I've, uh, I finished up in 2022 where I put too much time and energy into work and not enough into my content. And now in 2023, I'm like, mm-mm. Mm-mm. Case is back. <laughs> oh, same boat, brother. I'm same boat. I think very similarly, I loved just the entire process of putting together. I loved like doing our (laughs) Zoom chats and it really felt like I was connected with the community and like we were creating something for the community. And I think that that was what really felt special about it. It wasn't something that like the brands had power over uh, or these companies. It was something that was built by us for us. and that in itself was just so rewarding. And adding on to that, I felt like I discovered so many creators through this process. Like there are so many people that I'm like, there's people out in Vancouver. Like, how did I not know about you? And that was just a really cool discovery. Like I think once the data was in there, I was going in it myself, like who's in Vancouver? Who's it like close by? And who <laughs> creates content in the same niche that I do? And that was just so satisfying because I felt like I built out my community like times 500. So it, that has been very special. And yeah, uh, where people can find me, I am quite literally everywhere across the internet at this point. Um, I do have my two brands. So Comfy Girl Curls is where people who want the lifestyle, the beauty, the people who just want me for me. And then those who really want to hear the behind the scenes of being a content creator who want to go down that path, creating with Kea. Literally, if you type it in Google, all, all the things will pop up. But yeah, that's where I'm at. Have any stories you'd like us to share or communities we should highlight? Leave a comment on our social media or reach out to us on our website. I'm Ryan Funk. This was You Talk. And have yourself a good one.